Hallelujah. Amen and amen. We're going to open tonight in prayer, asking God to move in the midst of a number of needs. We're praying for this nation that God would supernaturally intervene in this time in history to move in a supernatural way, to bring multitudes of souls, families and individuals, whole towns <clears throat> and states to, uh, to repentance and revival on an unprecedented scale. God is able, and I believe that's what he wants to do. We need to contend in prayer, praying for our fellowship of churches, for uh, Pastor Greg Mitchell, Pastor Harold Warner, all of our outreach churches, all of our missionary churches, for God's special grace and covering of upon them uh, during the holiday season for God's special blessing upon them this upcoming revival in Dangriga that God would visit them in a supernatural way during this time pray that God would give relief to every one of our uh, missionary churches when it comes to this whole COVID-19 thing and the various variants that are emerging by different names uh, they're there to do a work for the gospel they're there to preach the gospel to the people of, the, of that nation and just pray for God to give them an open door that no man can close. Amen. We want to pray for a number of people who need healing in their bodies. Samantha uh, needs uh, healing regarding pregnancy complications. We're continuing to pray for Carrie Field. Uh, this is uh, Pastor Field's wife in Australia. Uh, Elizabeth Crespin 
has cancer. Joe Gallegos needs our prayers. Denise Seed is recovering from knee surgery. Uh, Gloria Luhan is battling cancer along with Amber Senna. And uh, continue to pray for Brother Lorenzo for a complete recovery for him and families that are mourning the loss of loved ones, especially this time of year, for God's special comfort upon them. How many tonight you have a burden on your own heart? You want to acknowledge that by lifting your hand before the Lord. Let's pray out together. And as we subside, if Mario uh, the third would make his way to open us in prayer tonight, let's pray. Father, in Jesus' name. You can be seated tonight. We're glad you're with us in the house of God tonight on this Sunday night. And if you're watching on live stream, we're glad you're there. We encourage you to come and join us, especially during uh, the holiday season. Amen. We want to bring you a number of announcements and uh, remind you of all that's happening. We are going to be praying in the mornings as we normally do Monday through Friday. We have prayer meeting here at the church. And again, if you can't be here, be somewhere Christian where you can start off your day in prayer. And then looking ahead on uh, Wednesday, uh, we have our midweek service at 7 with prayer an hour before at 6 o'clock. And then on Thursday, December 2nd, 4 o'clock, we're going to be starting on the float for the parade at Pastor Mario's house. And then on the 3rd uh, in the evening, we're, gonna, we're going to be having the live streamed men's rally from Prescott uh, here at the church for all the men at 730 in the morning at 830 on Saturday. They're going to be having the seminars. They'll be live streamed and we will be serving uh, breakfast burrito. And so if you're planning on coming, brother, uh, see Pastor Mario so you can let him know what your preference is there. Then, of course, on Sunday, our regular schedule, 930 Sunday School, as we continue our series on Millennials and Jesus. And then 1030 is our morning service and six in the evening every Sunday night as well. Looking ahead on the 10th, which is a, a Friday night, will be the women's Christmas party here at the church. You'll be hearing more about that. Ladies, but put that into your calendar. And then on the 13th, which is Monday, it's the next men's discipleship class in Albuquerque with Pastor Greg Mitchell. And we are looking forward to that. Amen. Tonight after the service, those who are in the choir interested in, in singing Christmas carols on the float meet here at the front. So uh, take note of that. Amen. Let's have our ushers come. We're going to take our evening's offering and honor God with our giving. One of the reasons why on this Sunday after Thanksgiving I preach on the coming holiday season is just so, again, we can be focused because it's so easy to be distracted during this time and uh, while we're distracted the needs are still there and especially our responsibilities for uh, missionaries it's one thing when we have uh, men who are pioneering in the states because they're working jobs to support their families but these families that are in other countries are not able to do that and so they d depend on us completely for their needs to be met and uh, then of course what they're doing with their churches during this time of year as well and so we, we carry a burden of responsibility that continues especially during this time of year and so we just need to be about our father's business in obeying God so let's bow our heads in the presence of God uh, Ronnie Cruz would you ask the Lord's blessing Thank you, Lord.
stomach is going to be growling. As a matter of fact, when we mention fast, it's like, oh, we hear it. But our heart, our inner man, it's much, much more stubble. It doesn't demand so much. You know, we kind of touched on this this morning concerning the heart, our heart, and what is going to be judged in, in that day before God. And the truth is, friend, our heart is crucial, very crucial to our salvation. As a matter of fact, Proverbs 4.23 says, Keep thy heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. In other words, friend, we have to keep our heart right. You know, I understand everything doesn't go your way. I understand things happen that shouldn't happen. I understand that things happen. But the Bible says we need to keep our heart with all diligence. Develop through those hard times. Realize that these times, I mean, truthfully, as we have heard years ago and times past, it says, you know what, this too will pass. You're going to go through things. You're going to feel it, but you've got to keep your heart because it is easy to say, well, you know what? God, amen, didn't help me. God wasn't there for me. How come God did this? How come did that? But he doesn't do it for me. I can remember growing up as a disciple. One of the things that I told God is God... I will serve you even if I lose everything I have. I had a decent paying job. The possibility of getting married, this is right before me and Lydia were courting and stuff, but I came to the point where I said, you know what, God? No matter what, I have to serve you. We need to keep our heart. The inner man is the most important part. Because there can be people that don't, don't, they'll do what they need to do on the outside. Hey, that person's doing well. They're doing good. But on the inside, they are not keeping their heart with all diligence. I'm going to secondly consider with you the inner man. Paul speaks about another part of our being, which is the inner man. Because it is the unseen dimension of life. This is talking about the spiritual person. This is what we do, amen, for our spiritual life. This is, amen, what you and I, amen, contend for. And we make these decisions that make a difference. This is the character of who we are. The real us. What you are when no one else sees. Jeremiah 17.10 says, I, the Lord, search the heart. I try the reins, even to give every man according to his ways and according to the fruit of his doings, because God looks on the heart, the inner being. You know, friend, there are people that Maybe you're not here tonight, but there are people that actually really have a problem with God. There are people that may even hold the, you know, bitterness against God for something God did not do. And this is what I, what I want to just encourage you to understand that he searches the heart. He knows the heart more than we know our own heart. He gets in there and he, amen, maybe even at times you'll be minding your own business and all of a sudden it's like God says, I want you to deal with this. You're like, no, absolutely not. I don't want to right now. But God says, you need to. You need to deal with this issue. You need to come so that I can heal that area of your life. You need to let me get in there and do a work or a heart transplant, if we could, amen, use that word tonight, because God looks upon the heart. When we're talking about the reins here, this means it is a look at the deeper parts of a person or the deepest part of our being where you and I understand that God, amen, is totally concerned that we are, amen, right with him. Guard your heart, as I mentioned. 
with all diligence. Because the enemy will make sure to tell you you have every right to be wrong, mad or wrong, or, or you have every right. This should never have taken place in your life. See, the inner man is what helps you survive the outward circumstances. If you have a good inner life, things are going to happen, but you'll deal with them the right way. When we don't have a good inner life, we don't deal with things the way we should. We lose perspective. We lose, amen, the, the reality of what we should be doing, how uh, and what we can do to change the circumstance according to God's will and purpose. As a matter of fact, I can remember, amen, they asked Pastor Mitchell over the years, uh, you know, and he was a, a, a tremendous leader, amen, in all that he did for us, Pastor Wayman Mitchell, and they would ask him over the years because friend, there was uh, adversity that came, it was betrayals that came to his life and they would ask him how did you survive all of that his answer was I have a relationship with Jesus you can make it through anything if you have that relationship with Jesus young or older person it doesn't matter as a young person you can establish a relationship with him you can talk to your heavenly father you can ask him even now god you have my future in your hands god what do you want me to do how do i prepare my life what am i going to uh, uh, what do you want me you know to to continue to get rid of if i have to certain things in my life because the truth is friend uh, god amen uh, wants a total relationship with us to build the inner man. Matthew 7, 24 to 25, I referred to this earlier. Therefore, whosoever hears these sayings of mine and does them, I will liken him to a wise man who built his house on the rock. And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew and beat on that house, and it did not fall, for it was founded on the rock. In other words, friend, it makes a difference how we build, what we allow to come into our lives. Attitudes can be something, friend, that will take us down one day if we don't deal with it within our heart. I know, I mean, we may not face it the happiest. As a matter of fact, the first reaction is going to be something, you know, oh my gosh, I don't really like this. But in the end, we have to turn our heart, get control of our life and say, you know what? I am going to make it because Jesus will help me. Ephesians 3.16 says that he would grant you according to his riches of his glory to be strengthened with might through his spirit in the inner man. See, the Holy Spirit, friend, will do that if we let him. Haven't you ever been going through something? All of a sudden you're like, my God, this is, I, I mean, I could blow up a building right now if I could. But the Holy Spirit says, no, <laughs> you don't want to do that. Right? I mean, come on, folks. It's still within us. The Holy Spirit controls that. He will speak to us. He will direct us during those times. Then in that, friend, we learn how to be strengthened in those areas of our life. And the truth is we strengthen the inner man. And you might say this is repeated, but do we strengthen the inner man through prayer? Through prayer. Friend, I'm going to tell you what, amen, there have been definite times, amen, we've gone through things, me and my wife, and as a family, we've gone through different situations, and it is through prayer, friend, praying, oh God, help us. God, it doesn't feel good. I don't really like what's happening, but God, you're going to help us through. We contend, God, let me control, you know, uh, my emotions. God, let me be a Christian as I deal with this situation. Or maybe someone that offends us. We have to even take it to God in prayer. Because it's easy, friend, to take things out on people. It's easy to take things into our own hands. But we need to be a people, friend, that understand, uh, as in Matthew 26, 41 says, Watch and pray, lest you enter into temptation. The spirit in it is willing, but the flesh is weak. We bring, amen, our lives into control through prayer. And I know, I mean, we can sit in the prayer room sometimes and we think, well, I don't really got nothing to pray about. But folks, we got a lot to pray about. 
There's a lot of people we can pray for, but there's also things I know that even in myself, when I go into that prayer room, I say, oh God, help me, change me. God, do what you need to do in my life. God, I want to be right before you. And friend, I'm not saying that as to try and feel or let you feel that I'm a higher saint. By no means. I say that because I'm a sinner saved by grace. A sinner that knows a God, amen, and knows God, and, and, and God would needs to help me. See, think about this, amen. Why is our walk with God sometimes a crawl with God? Why is it that way sometimes? Why the lack of passion for our Savior who gave his all for us? Why? Why is it sometimes we feel that? Can it be that maybe in our times of prayer we're not saying, God, God, give me, uh, give me your heart. Give me a burden, God. Upon, God, let me do what you desire uh, through my life. Why the lack of victory over sin in the average Christian's life? I understand as a new convert, I mean, we fall, stumble, you know, like a newborn baby that starts to walk. But there's a difference once we've already been saved for a while. Right? And there are certain things that God is saying, listen, amen, that you and I can turn as we pray. We say, God, oh, let me not fall into this temptation. God, help me. Uh, God, strengthen my flesh, my flesh is weak. But God, I'm going to pray this through. And the truth is, many times uh, there is also a lack of power to shake this world for Jesus Christ. Amen. Reminds me of the words of Billy Sunday ring true. He says, he that is a stranger to prayer is a stranger to power. Power. See, prayer is not just something we do because we have ministry. Prayer is something we do because we are Christians. Because we're going to face life. Things are going to be thrown at us. That are they're going to bewilder you sometimes. They're going to come to you from angles or directions. It's like, how in the world? Why? I never even wanted this to happen in my life. God, you're not fair. We also strengthen the inner man through reading his word. Jesus said, My words are spirit and they are life. He even, amen, when the devil tempted him, he even said, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. Where do you find the words of God? You find them in the Bible. You find him as you sit down to read. You find it there, amen, when you, amen, just spend some time with God reading. And, and as you're reading, God will start to speak to your life. God will start to, amen, minister. God will start to challenge you. And see, friend, the truth is, something, amen, uh, is going to happen at times in our lives. Uh, and we have to understand that when we read God's word, uh, amen, we're going to realize, as Psalms 119.11 says, I word, have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. God's word, friend, will come to life, amen, when sin presents itself. And we take the time to feed our inner man. You'll be able to face outward temptations. Because, friend, listen, the determining factor is simply this. What have you been putting inside in the inner man? The old saying is still true. We might, I might be repeating this, but the truth is garbage in, garbage out. If we will feed ourselves the Word of God, friend, we will be able to stand. We will be able even to do what we must. As a matter of fact, R.A. Torrey also mentioned, he says, you may talk about power, but if you neglect the one book that God has given you as the one instrument through which he imparts and exercises his power, you, uh, you will not have it. You may read many books and go to many conventions. You may have all your night prayer meetings to pray for the power of the Holy Ghost, but unless you keep in constant and close 
association with the one book, the Bible, you will not have power. And if you ever had power, you will not maintain it except by the daily, earnest, intense study of that book. 99 Christians in every 100 are merely playing at Bible study. And therefore, 99 Christians in every 100 are mere weaklings. When they might be giants, both in their Christian life and in their service. What he's saying, friend, is that everybody has the ability to develop, amen, into strong Christians. Everyone has the ability, friend, if we're willing to, amen, work at it, friend. Yes, you know what? Uh, I thought salvation was free. I don't have to work. Friend, listen, to build your inner life, you have to, amen, work at it. It doesn't come easy. You don't just pop in a CD or you don't just, you know, use a thumb drive and start to listen to the preaching. And no, friend, there's a part that we also have to get a hold of God to read his word and sit there and study exactly what the Bible is saying and what it is saying to us. Another thing to build the inner man is speaking in tongues. Oh, friend, listen to me. Speaking in tongues is a gift given to us by God. It is a hotline connection between us and God. The devil cannot, does not know what you are saying. And there are times, friend, listen to me, that we don't even know what to pray. You ever been there? It's just, I don't know how to pray. God, I don't know what to pray. I don't know how I'm going to get through this circumstance. But you start to speak in tongues. You pray in that gift that God has given you. And friend, listen to me. Before you know it, amen, things start to trans, uh, transpire. Things start to change because it is a powerful dimension of inner strength where it says, amen, in Jude 120, but ye, beloved, building up yourselves on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. Because, friend, we get strengthened, we get edified, amen, it builds us up. I want to thirdly consider with you the outflow of strength, because that's, in the end, what we want to see happen. We need to be strong Christians. We need to be those, amen, that are going to stand the test of time. And there is a promise here that we can... Actually, it says, be strengthened with might in the inner man. Ephesians 3.16, this is what it says at the end, that, amen, to be strengthened with might through his spirit in the inner man. Strengthened means to be in power, to increase in vigor, to have might, to have force, ability, uh, uh, dunamis, dynamite. We realize, friend, that this supernatural strength, uh, amen, in every area of our life so that you and I can make it in Jesus Christ. The scripture tells us some benefits of being strengthened with the might that I'm talking about. And really what it boils down to is spiritual survival. In the end, we need to survive. I mean, we live in a world, friend, is, that is going crazy. Crazy beyond understanding. Do you think, you read the news, you say, how in the world? What is... What are they thinking? Where do they get these ideas from? See, I believe, amen, that God makes us strong in the midst of problems, in the midst of trials, in the midst of negative circumstances so that we can make it. Paul says, this will help you to survive and to keep going. You ever met some people that they've gone through some tragedies that are Christians and they still live for God? You ever met people that just, it, it blows you away. How in the world do they still live for Jesus? You know, one example that I can truly remember that just, I don't know if I would have been able to do the same, but I remember Pastor Martin Montoya. When the tragedy struck his life, oh, I, I, I'm like, I don't know how I would have handled that. I can't tell you because I'm not there. But I'm going to tell you what, he was such a strength and has been a strength to my life. 
Oh, I tell you what, man. This is what building the inner strength, the inner man does. That when you have to face something, you're going to make it. And the truth is, friend, in being able to stand during these times, it brings glory to God. It brings glory to God. People out there that do not come to church don't know God. They, they see your life. They know what happens. And when they see you live for God, they're like, you know what? There must really be a God. They really serve the real God because if they can make it through that, then that means, I mean, that there is a God that helps them. And it forms a good opinion that when they see you and I, amen, instead of being all, you know, downcast, and that we are, amen, like shining lights before them, not because we just take things half-heartedly, but the truth is, friend, we can stand in the midst of trials. We can have peace, amen, in those trials. And the reality of it is, people will even say to you, why are you not freaking out? Why aren't you falling apart? Our answer is, I have something on the inside. God's on the inside. He's made my inner being. I've learned to trust Him. I've learned to give myself to Him regardless of what is taking place. The truth is, people who know God will say there's nothing more valuable than knowing Him in our lives. I understand, well, Pastor, if I had a little bit more money, I could really... <laughs> money only goes so far. If I didn't have to live in Las Vegas, New Mexico, you still take you with you. But if you know God, you can go anywhere and live for Him. You could go, even as I found out, even when I went to the nation of Belize, God met me there. We went through certain things, but listen, friend, God was always there. God, amen, will never leave you nor forsake you. It doesn't matter when you build an inner life with him, friend. Listen, uh, you can be assured uh, that as you, amen, start to pray, God is going to move on your behalf. I want to close with this story. Captain Chesley, or Sully Schulenberg, U.S. Airways flight had to crash land in the Hudson River. I think you remember that. In New York, when both engines were knocked out after hitting, of all things, birds. Dumb birds. I remember vividly as a child knowing that I needed to be prepared. As a child, think about this, for whatever might come. This happened when I was almost 58 years old. So he said, I had a lifetime of experience to draw upon to meet the challenges. As Christians, we have, amen, and can have experiences to draw from when we really face those big challenges. But they come as you and I allow for the inner man, not just the outer, the inner man to be built and strengthened. You know, it's okay to come to God and say, you know what, God, I'm scared. You know, God, I just don't know how this is going to work out. You know, I understand the Bible says, you know, we're to be valiant. But there are times, friend, that, you know, you just got to, you really come to God with an open heart. You know, God, I'm really struggling. Can you help me? Of course he'll help you. Because I think that that's what happens too many times. We can put on, like, you know, this is a facade. I, I, I can't show my weakness to God. I can't. Yes, you can. He can only help you if you'll be honest. He can only help you, amen, through the situation of life. If you will just come to him and say, God, listen, I mean, you know what? I, I know I should be better at, at this Christian thing, but I'm not there yet. God, help me to get there.
That's why Paul was saying what he said. Because there's one life, which is the outer, but there's the other that's the inner. And the inner can be developed. The inner can, you can make good choices. You can be a Christian friend that shines. As we heard this morning concerning shining in the midst of darkness. That when people see your life, they're like, you know what, there's something about you that's different, man. There's something about you, I don't know what it is, but of course, at that point, we have the ability to let them know what it is. And that, you know, people would say, you know what? I want what you got. I want what you got. And I know some of us may have seen individuals that, maybe not in this church, because I remember before I came to Jesus Christ, I was so upset with people that were setting a bad example. But I'm going to tell you what, it doesn't, not everyone is a bad example. We all can be good examples. We all, I mean, can live our lives, but if we will allow not just the outward to be develop, developed, but the inward also. I like every head bowed, every head close tonight in the presence of God. Amen. As I bring this service tonight to a close, and speaking about the inner man, the inner part, who we really are, we, our character is built and made, how we handle circumstances, how we react, who we are, really who we are, but no one else sees us. Tonight you're in this place. You're not saved, you're not born again. Probably say, well, you know, I don't know how that could ever change, Pastor. I, I, I know how it can change. First of all, you need to have Jesus Christ come into your life, cleanse you of your sins, and the Bible says that He will come and live inside of you. You're here, you're not saved, you're not born again, you're not a Christian, you've never given your life to Jesus, would you respond just quickly and say, that's me, I need Jesus right now. I'm not saved, I'm not born again, I'm not a Christian, or maybe I'm, maybe you're backslidden tonight. Maybe you might have already said, maybe you've already stopped, maybe you've already in heart said, I'm here physically, but in the inside, I'm not, I'm not here. I've given up, you're backslidden, you're away from God, quickly listen, friend. God wants to meet you here tonight. Lift your hand if you're not saved or you're backslidden. Say, that's me. I need Jesus right now. Hallelujah. I'm going to move on then tonight. And basically, man, I just want to encourage you that if we are lacking in the inner man, listen to me, it's not over. God always meets us at our point of need. God will always help and strengthen us. And, but the fact is, God's not just going to pour that into us. God wants us also, amen, to put our part in. And we can honestly say tonight, you know what? I don't have that inner man strength. I don't have what you're talking about tonight, friend. Every single one of us can have it. If we want it. We allow God to build that and make it in our lives. Yes, it takes work. Yes, it is going to, uh, it's not just going to automatically fall, fall in, but friend, it is possible for every single one of us. Because there will come a day. There will come a circumstance. There will come a situation. We need to be built in the inner man so when that day comes, we can stand. We can stand and say, oh, thank you, Jesus. Gave myself to prayer. Gave myself to reading your word. Gave myself to make the decisions that I needed to. My inner man standing. As Paul said, even though our old, the outward is perishing, the inner man is growing day by day. I'm going to open the altar tonight. You want to come find a place to pray. If God has been speaking to you this evening, you want to come, amen. The altar is open. We're going to sing a song of worship. You come, amen, and speak to God this this evening. You're my refuge and my strength. You're the God of my salvation. Mighty Prince of Peace and the Lord of every nation. And of your power there shall be
refuge and my strength. You're the God of my salvation, mighty Prince of Peace, and the Lord of every nation, and of your power there shall be no end. salvation mighty prince of peace and the lord of every nation and of your power there shall be no strength. You're the God of my salvation, mighty Prince of Peace, and the Lord of every nation, and of your power there shall be no Amen. I believe God has spoken to us tonight. We want to even dismiss in a word of prayer. I'm going to go ahead and ask uh, Brother George Cruz Jr. Amen. But please remember the meeting for those that Pastor announced up here at the front right after service. Go ahead and dismiss us in prayer. <coughs>